Hello, nuclear enthusiasts. I am Leonidas. This is Nuclearis, and tonight we're going to do a quick startup. For those who have never played or just starting out, might be confused on the process or what's a good setup, and I'm going to show you a quick, clean, balanced startup to get you running so that you can get into the game and just things and figure out how things work. So, Please note that this is the current version that I am doing this tutorial on. It's 2.2, hotfix number 175. They are changing these and updating them regularly, so please take note of that. Earlier versions would be very different, and later versions might have some uh, differences in them. Also note that I'm not using the chemical add-on uh, for this tutorial. So, without further ado, let's get going. We'll select a new game, easy mode. Apprentice mode would be a tutorial that we don't need since this one is a little more efficient and quicker. We're going to make sure skip, help, and activate control is off because we want to do that part ourselves. We will have the plant ready to start operations though. Without that, we would need to purchase all of our equipment, materials, and it takes a lot longer to get things going. I'll do that on another day, but this should load us into our control room shortly. There's going to be a few things we have to complete as part of our easy mode setup just to get you used to the game as though it's your first time. Here we are in our control room to walk, WSAD keys to run, hold down shift, and use the right mouse button and it will tell us information about various things. If there is no information to be had, you'll just uh, see the little arrows and it won't do much. Um, we will go through the items on the left in yellow to move through each of those to get them off our screen, press tab for our tablet, G for a Geiger counter. We would use this in case there's any radiation, see how much there is. T to speed up time if we wanted to, medium and fast. This is one we won't use too much later in the game. You, these corresponding numbers on your cube board are also one, two, and three. And then the H, excuse me, the H button to bring up the help screen if you ever forget uh, how to make something work. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, we need to turn on our consoles first. So we're gonna start at our fuel station and we will activate this guy. Then we're gonna come down here and activate our pressurizer console. Before we move on any further, what we're going to do here is turn on our pressurizer thermostat and heater. This is going to start raising the temperature in our pressurizer, which is full of uh, our cooling liquid, water in this case, which will raise the pressure here, which will raise the pressure within our core vessel. Uh, as we get to our internal supply, this is the console that regulates the electricity we're uh, generating internally. Right now, our generators are running, which we don't want. We're gonna flip on external power supply, which means the city is gonna power the things that we need listed over here. As we do that, we will stop our generator so that we don't burn through the gas, the fuel. And you can hear it winding down. Moving on to our reactor. This is our actual core. We'll turn on that console and the console for the fuel rods. We will make sure that bank one is all inserted at 100, showing us 100 here, and our rod height is at 100, which is exactly what we want. Uh, our current vessel pressure is nine. That will continue to build as our pressurizer uh, pressure builds. Our current uh, reactor fuel temp is 17, though it hasn't been inserted yet, so we'll do that shortly, but it would be 17 otherwise in, inside of the core itself. Uh, this is for chemicals that we don't have enabled, so we're not going to worry about that now. I'll go through all these in another video. Uh, coolant system, this is what not only cools down our core, but takes the heat and passes it down along the line to the other areas, such as our energy generation. This is the console where we look at our turbines and our uh, electric generators, and we regulate the electricity we're sending onto the city. Before we move on here, we're going to make sure that our bypass is at zero. As we send steam to our turbines, which is what spins and generates electricity that we send out to the city, we have the option to bypass some of that steam or, or only send a certain percentage. So this is the, the percentage of the steam that we want to go around and not end up with a turbine. We want all of it. So we make sure that's at zero. Flip on our resistor bank. That's a switch from white to green, which it did. A 90 will appear here. Uh, and we'll show green and lit up in the temperature there. Uh, next, we come over to our steam generator. This is the nuts and bolts. This is what we're gonna be monitoring most and will give us information about uh, the boiling, the steam, the coolant uh, that feeds into the turbines there. So we'll flip that guy on over here. Last is our condenser, and this is kind of a cooling system, our secondary cooling system. We'll flip that guy on. 
and we're going to right away start the vacuum pump right now we have no vacuum uh, so we will click that guy on simple left click green light comes on and this will start to climb there we go it's alive so let's come back we need this number to reach 150 we are there so let's go ahead and load our fuel we'll come back to our fuel station red means that there's fuel loaded and it's ready to be inserted into the core reactor itself if we needed to open a hatch we could if we were to drain the water but we haven't yet the way this works is is we open the hatch well, and there's little steps here if you wanted to load fuel you would get out the water you would isolate the bay which means you would raise the pedestal you'd set open the hatch you would put the fuel on the on the pedestal you would close the hatch over that unisolate it which means you drop the fuel down which is what we're going to do now but before we can hit load fuel we need to change our operating mode we go from shutdown to nominal New operating mode established nominal mode this changes the settings of some of the alarms and it allows us to do things like load our fuel and we'll see a neat little animation with that there we go our fuel has been inserted and it is active okay so now we are all ready to start a reactor first thing we do is turn on our coolant pump and set it to 50%. Shortcut key for that is medium. Slow is 25, medium is 50%, fast is 100. Has started to circulate. Outstanding. Next, we'll need our condenser. We will switch this on and also put it at 50%. You can adjust this by left clicking and moving your mouse left or right to go up and down. You can also hold it and press A and D to move manually or if you just keep your mouse held down, it'll give you kind of a reminder. If you hold the Alt button, you can go up by a factor of five. Sometimes a little finicky. Uh, we want 50, and note that the pumps take a little while. There's a little lag to them. So our vacuum is at 100%. We can now switch this off, and it will remain that way until either something breaks or we vent out uh, pressure into our vacuum. But this vacuum on is what pulls steam through the system and into the secondary cooling. So we have our primary cooling. We have our secondary cooling, our steam generator, we're gonna leave as is. We wanna make sure our MCSV is open. This is how much of our steam that we're generating that we want sent over, the, over to the turbine. Again, we could bypass it, but why would we send steam and then bypass it? There are certain situations, but not for our purposes tonight. So we are ready to start our reaction. So we come over to our uh, control rod bank, we select the number pad, and we're 96 would get it started. Well, we're going to do 95 so it goes a little bit faster, just so we don't take too long. You'll hear it clicking as the rods move. You see it goes yellow. We'll get a neat animation of it starting. You see our rod, each of our rods is at 95. If one was stuck or damaged, um, we might have a different number here. It's at 95. The rod height is 95. It's set to 95. And you can see all this out the big giant window. See the blue? it's reactive right now so as we come back we'll notice that our temperature is now starting to rise this is where it all begins things start happening a lot quicker now so we come over and we are watching our temperature as our steam generator temperature rises we're looking for 100 when it hits 100 we're going to turn on our secondary coolant pumps and we will set them to 25 we can actually do that now before we turn it on by simply clicking slow and it will preset it to 25. So when we click it on, it'll go straight to 25. We don't want to do that yet. Alternatively, we could flip the switch and just wait. And then when it got to our selected or our desired temperature, we would select slow to jump up there. So we will let that continue to climb, speed things up just a little bit. We have now reached a critical mass, which means a reaction is happening and it's a runaway. It will continue to heat itself. The reactor has reached critical mass, and its status has changed to reactive. Okay, that was the sound of me slowing things down because we are getting close to 100. So we'll let that continue to climb. If we run back over here, we can check our temperature is still climbing. That's great. 360 is optimal. Uh, for a little less wear, you can do lower, about 310 to 320. We'll come back, and we're looking for that magic 100 which is the boiling point in Celsius at sea level for our steam generator, which is what we want in the game. So once that hits 100, we're basically there. We, we are using uh, system three, loop three. We flip that on, we go slow. 
which we'd already pre-selected, and you'll see that this climbs. I believe this pump, it seems like this is the slowest moving of all of them. So now we're just letting it do its thing. Uh, we will watch this continue to rise. The temperature will rise, the pressure will rise, the water in our steam generator will begin to uh, descend, will decrease rather, as we're generating more steam, which is what we're seeing here. Our steam generated far outweighs the stem, steam that we're sending out. So the steam that's being sent out is measured what's going over to our turbine. This is not enough to get it spinning yet. We will hear an animation and see these numbers start to climb as our turbine begins to spin. So we come back and check. One of the things I like to do early on is hit tab, go into our alarms, and change some of these alarms. So the high temperature alarm, I like to set at 385. The reason for that is if I set a rod height, then I get distracted doing something else because there's so much going on. I want it to alert me before it gets too high. 385 does that. Similarly, our condenser, if our condenser gets to 100 degrees, it will trip our turbines, will stop generating steam, which is a bad thing. We do not want that. So I set this alarm to 85 to alert me ahead of time so I can get ahead of it. Coming back now, we'll take a look at our pressure. As this builds, it won't start pushing or have enough pressure to start our turbine until uh, 30 or 35 or higher even. There's three general things that will trip our turbine and cause it to stop running. The first is our temperature dropping below 100. That means we're no longer generating steam. So of course there will be no steam going to our steam generator, steam turbine, excuse me. If our pressure drops below, say 35 to 30, depending on a couple other factors, we will not have enough pressure to push the steam to the turbine and spin the turbine itself, overcome that mechanical resistance, and our turbine will trip and everything will spool down and we'll essentially have to start over in essence. The third way, like I said, is if our condenser temperature gets too high. Right now, it's gonna remain around 20, especially with how much we're cooling. We are way overdoing the cooling, but again, this is just a quick, clean, easy way to get up, running, and balanced and get electricity out to the city. On that note, we need to request and let the city know, hey, we're making electricity, we're ready to send it out. The way we schedule that and request it is hit our tab button. We come to our communications and we request to start operations. We're gonna get something back from the city that says, okay, we have your request, we'll let you know what time you can start. There it is. We'll get a third message shortly that'll have our startup time. It is always the next hour. If I request it at 10.59, it will give me 11. If I request it at 10.01, it will give me 11, whatever the next hour is. The turbine takes about an hour and a half game time, hour and a half game time to spin up and reach the RPM of 3,060 revolutions per minute, which is what we need to dial in to the city. We need that frequency uh, to, to link up with the grid system and provide power. So if we do it too early, we're going to get dinged because the city said, hey, you were supposed to start delivering electricity at 10 o'clock. Where are you? If we start too late, we'll be generating power and have nowhere to send it to and just have to burn it. So we'll continue to wait and watch. Our pressure continues to rise. Temperature continues to rise, and in any minute, we should start hearing our generator, or excuse me, our turbine uh, spool up, and we'll see these numbers increase. The resistors are essential. What this means is any electricity that is generated that is not used, either we're, we're generating too much more than what the city requests, which is what this bus is right here. If we're generating more than what the city requests, or if we're just not sending any of our power to the city, it's kind of staying within the turbine, it needs to go somewhere. Otherwise, it'll damage the turbine. Well, that's what the, the, the resistors do. They can accept up to 90 megawatts, which is massive. Previously, in the old reactor uh, before 2.2, it was much lower. So in the early game, you're going to generate way more than what the city needs, and that's fine. It's all going to go into your resistors. If this is not on, you will damage things. The city will penalize you. There go our turbines. We see the numbers climbing up. It will get this little uh, ding from the city that we are exceeding demand. And also, we will burn up our uh, turbine very quickly and damage it. So, resistor banks are essential. Leave them on basically all the time. Once you get better and can get within a close enough range to what the city's requesting you can turn those off but for our purposes we're going to leave it on 
like I said, this is going to take about an hour and a half game time. Probably closer to an hour, maybe hour 15, because of the setup is so quick. So we're going to speed up time and hit three. We'll come over and check our temperature. With our current setup, this will take us to about 375, maybe 380, which is uh, perfect. And then we, it'll start coming down. As time goes on, you use up fuel. And so you'll have to pull out the, these control rods more and more and more, revealing more and more of the fuel in order to keep a constant temperature, which is fine. That's not a bad thing. Later on, you'll have to replace the fuel or add more fuel to get the same heat. Uh, people ask a lot, well, how do I know how much fuel is left? How do I know how consumed that fuel block is? Well, it, when it's used up when you're at about zero on the control rods and not getting heat. So some people go as far down as they can to where they're only around 10 or 15 on the control rods. Some like to, to replace it earlier. It's total, totally your choice. So we're waiting for this to spin up. Once it hits 11, we're going to hear this guy start ticking. And we're going to see a... Uh, actually, it's going to go this way. The dot spin. And this is a synchroscope. It helps us to uh, know when we are in phase with the rest of the grid in the city. It won't give us this dot until 11, because that's what time they said. Actually, we didn't actually look at it. So let's slow it on time. Open up our tablet. Go to our communications. And like we figured, they would start uh, letting us accept electricity at 11 o'clock. So once it hits 11, we'll see this dot spinning. And as this gets close to 360, we have to make this dot end up right up here, which means it's in phase, and then close the circuit, which is what physically connects our turbine to the power grid going out to the city. So as expected, there's our, uh, our ticking noise. If you're over here, you can kind of hear it. It goes away. You have to be within a certain range to hear it. If you move away, you can't hear it at all. Certain things are like that. Some pumps, the water of the reactor, certain alarms are that way. Um, so distance does matter. So we'll hang out here. We're going to speed this up again because it's going to take a while, like I said, to get that 3060. We're definitely well into the 11 o'clock hour. We see our core temperature is still rising. This vessel pressure is uh, automatically managed through our uh, heater, pressurizer heater through this thermostat. If we were to turn that off, we would have to manually cycle that red switch on and off, which is a pain. So we're still getting closer, right? We're still good on time. We want to try and get, our goal is to before 1159 be producing, get this to 3060, producing that electricity and have our circuit closed so it's heading out to the city. If we close it too early or out of phase, uh, when it's not lined up where it's supposed to be, we can destroy our turbine and it would it would uh, be out of sync, out of phase with the rest of the power grid and do all sorts of bad things. Checking our pressure, 60 is ideal, so we're right about where we want. It'll jump up and down a little bit. Temperature is looking great, well above 100. Uh, our volume, that one we don't worry about too much. As long as it's not below that 12, probably about 10,000 number, we're doing just fine. These guys we won't worry about yet. Okay, here we are. So we're gonna slow down now, and we're gonna push Alt and use our buttons. We need to raise, fine tune our RPMs, and we're getting looking for that 360. Try and get it before the dot comes around. Nope, gonna miss it, so I'm gonna let it keep going around before I raise it again. The closer you get to 360, the slower the dot is, so I don't wanna have to wait too long. So I'm going to raise it one more time, and I'm going to anticipate it when it gets to 360 at the top. I will click it once more. We are green, green, and close. In just a second, we will see that we are not diverting all of our electricity, but instead 12 is going to start going to the city, and 18 is what we're burning off. And we are rolling, folks. That's it. Your uh, nuclear reactor is up and running. It is uh, secure, balanced. And this is about the fastest you'll get it and the easiest startup you can do from here. You can play with it. You can work on demands, figure out how things go. I'll have another video for you, but this has been my tutorial on how to get the fastest, cleanest, easiest startup for a smooth running nuclear reactor in Nucleares for the 2.2 175 hotfix. Thanks so much for stopping by and check out my other videos.